What's the word, y'all? NBA teams are afraid to make trades right now. Yesterday, I made this tweet. What are trades at? Us NBA nerds love December 15th. It is the day that every player that signed in the offseason is eligible to be traded. So we automatically think that after December 15th, the floodgates is going to open and we're going to see this deal, this deal. And here we are sitting in January 3rd and not a single trade has happened. Not even really a murmur of trades have happened. And I was wondering what the heck is going on? So I tweeted this, and somebody that is in the know shot me a text. We hopped on the call. We topped it up for a little bit, and I asked him the question, what is the reason that we haven't really seen any trades this season? And he gave me a very direct answer. He said GMs across the league right now are valuing their players higher than consensus. So you might not see this person as worthy of getting a first round pick in return, but that GM is looking at it and say, oh, we want a first for this dude. We want a first for that dude. And because of that, there hasn't been a lot of trade talks. Actually, I'll take that back. There has been talks. There hasn't been a lot of movement with these trades. And I tweeted that and people were like, ah, because of Rudy Gobert, the Rudy Gobert trade messed up the market. But that also is very weird to me. Okay, so let's say I'm a GM and you're a GM. And I have a player that you want. And I say, ah, you're not getting him unless you give me a first. And you don't believe he's worth the first. How can I convince you to give me a first for this player? When we just saw this offseason, the team that gave up five firsts, it's not working out for them. So the, so the teams that normally probably would be willing to give up a first saw the other stuff. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Five first round picks for Rudy, they're a lottery team. Three first round picks for DeJounte Murray, uh, and he's looking great. So right now we're at a stalemate. And if you look in recent NBA history, we've seen at least one trade happen at this point in the season every year for the past like decade. And 2021-2022, we saw a trade happen on this day. January 3rd as I'm recording this video. It was Rajon Rondo getting traded to the Cavs, whatever, but it was a deal. Watch a trade happen like the day I'm publishing this video. I just have a feeling I'm going to hit upload and then boom, a trade is going to happen. You know what? I'll accept that because I need something to happen in the league right now. Something outside of the amazing performances because the basketball on court is great, but I just want to see some shakeup. The season before that was a bit weird because it wasn't December 15th because we had the, the virus season or whatever, but we saw the James Harden trade happen before what would have been the December 15th uh, uh, set date. The year before that, we saw Jordan Clarkson get traded before December 15th. The year before that, we saw Jimmy Butler get traded to the 76ers. The year before that, we saw two trades that didn't really matter. And the year before that, we saw Jeremy Grant trade to OKC. And all of these trades happened before December 15th, before everybody was eligible to be traded. And right now, we ain't got nothing. And it's, it's kind of interesting. He also said on that call that he thinks, and he's speculating on this one, um, that once that first trade goes through, that a lot of trades are going to follow suit because somebody is going to reset the market, if you will. So we just waited for that one GM or those two GMs to agree on something, and we are gonna see a lot of movement. BR put together an article, the NBA player every NBA team needs to trade in 2023. I mean, we got the obvious ones like John Collins. Gallinari looked smooth as hell the other day. The day that the Boston Celtics were in Denver and the, the rim was messed up, they kept showing Gallinari in his suit. He was, he, he been dressing clean, the rules to be clean. And uh, trading him away, I mean, he's got the contract, so it would work out. Nikola Vucevic for the Bulls is is fun. Um, I I would say the answer should be most of the roster. You know what I'm saying? Zeke Naji would be an interesting player if I was a young rebuilder team to go in on Zeke. I am still super high on Zeke, and I know this season hasn't been the explosion that I wanted it to be as a Zeke Naji fan. Um, but if I'm a rebuilding team, I'm, I'm, I'm trading for Zeke if he's available. Eric Gordon is an obvious one, especially after that interview where he was asked about the progression or um, how things are getting better in Houston. He said there has not been any improvement. So that was um, a really solid quote, I guess, depending on the way you look at it. Because I saw some people interpret it as like, man, free this dude. He's trying to get out. He's been there for too long doing a rebuild. But other people saw it as, hey, this is leadership saying that, man, we've been in this fight for this long and y'all not doing nothing. We ain't getting better. So, I mean, it, I guess it's up to your own interpretation. Hey, these um, these tunnel fits that they getting off in this article kind of clean. Russell Westbrook clean. Danny Green clean. The Danny Green one is interesting because when they were on national TV uh, like a week or so ago, I don't remember who they were going against. They mic'd up Danny Green on the sideline. They interviewed Danny Green on the sideline. And I was watching and I was thinking, do we really believe that Danny Green is going to be on this team once he become completely healthy? I don't know how far he is in his his um rehabilitation. He actually talked about it, but I don't remember what he said. How far along he is on his rehabilitation. Obviously, Danny Green's a quality NBA player. He's a winning player. 
but he also is making a, a nice sizable contract for the Memphis Grizzlies if they w did want to use that to kind of upgrade for somebody that we know for sure will be healthy. So an interesting player. D'Angelo Russell is a very interesting one for sure um, because his market is going to be very, very, I don't know, lackluster. Uh, I made a video on my gaming channel where I was rebuilding the Timberwolves and I sent them to Washington because Washington is a team that has decided that they don't want to ever rebuild. So be it. Um, and D'Angelo Russell is at least good. And he not, uh, I just don't think he's a great fit in Minnesota with what they're trying to do. And it, it kind of makes sense considering the Washington Wizards have bought in on people that are at least been solid in the past, but maybe not greatest in the season. They trade for him, i.e. Porzingis and now Porzingis is playing like an all-star. Um, so maybe D'Angelo Russell can do something like that. He was an all-star a few years ago, also in the last year of his deal. So I don't know how that would work out. Uh, it's just, it feels like if you are trading D'Angelo Russell, you're not getting great value because his value is low. So it's like, would we rather just let him play out the rest of the season? But he's also in the last year of his deal. Do we think he'd resign if we gave him something less than what he's making right now? Because he ain't worth $31 million that he's getting. So he's in a very weird spot too. Fred Van Vliet. Boy. I saw a tweet um, this morning that said that Fred Van Vliet now has the lowest field goal percentage in all of basketball. And, and, and that made me somewhat sad. It made me somewhat sad, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I've been a Fred Van Vliet, like, I don't want to say supporter because that makes it seem like I was vouching for it for years. I just, I've enjoyed Fred Van Vliet over the last couple seasons. I even bought one of his, um, actually, let me show you. This is the early stage of me growing out my hair. So it was in the struggle phase. But I had a Fred Van Vliet shirt. And Fred Van Vliet actually commented on the strong emoji. And I was hyped in 2018 when Freddie did that. That was pre-All-Star. I was like, oh, snap. Freddie's that man. And I've been a supporter, if you want to say that. I don't, again, I don't know if I want to use that word um, for a minute. So to see him performing the way he is is, is ridiculous. Um, obviously, the last year of his deal, even though I think he has an option attached to it, I'm curious to what his either trade market will be or his free agency market. Considering he was just an All-Star less than 365 date. Like, it hasn't even been a full year since he was an All-Star. And now he's not playing well, you know? So, I mean, him being on that list is kind of kind of wild. He also seems like a potential Washington Wizards candidate because, again, we know he can be good. So let's let's buy in low because we're Washington and we might not even have to give up nothing more than Will Barton and this and something, something. I also think that teams like the Chicago Bulls or the Toronto Raptors are holding things up mostly because those are the two teams that will have the most assets that would potentially tip the scale in the direction of the team that's that's trading for them but they're they have to make the decision whether or not they're sellers or they're going to stand pat or they're going to be buyers so once they figure that out i think that's going to help too because no other team is necessarily going to be selling like the spurs might sell but like josh richardson you know Yaka Pertl could could definitely help a playoff team, but like they don't really have a ton. While the Bulls have a Demar, Zach Levine, Vucevic, Alice Caruso, Vontae Green, and the Raptors have a Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Ogiana. You know, like both of those teams have a bunch of different assets if they decide that they wanted to hit reset or if they decide to they, they want to retool. So I think once those two teams decide a lot of the stuff, it will open up the world for a lot of different organizations. Because the way it's looking right now. I would argue that both conferences, there's a lot of teams that could win it. So I'm sure a lot of teams are convinced, hey, if we buy in a little bit right now, it will work out in, at the, in the long run. I think this season is going to be a lot about matchups, and you might match up well if you add a DeMar. I'm just saying, if I'm, this is my plea to the other organizations. Buy some of the Bulls stuff, please, and give us the three first-round picks that Rudy got, please. Um, let me know what you think about the trade market right now. I'll be in that comment section. I do want to say I appreciate all the support over the last, let's say, week and a half every single video i've dropped before this one was better than the last as far as statistically and we love that considering uh in 2023 one of my goals is to look at this channel as if it is my main channel um and and prioritize the content over here over the gaming channel just because this is what i enjoy doing more so to see y'all enjoying the videos as much as i'm enjoying making them just makes everything so seamless and i appreciate y'all and i'll be back tomorrow